artificial intelligence has been threatening everyone's jobs, including interpreters. Inaccurate interpretation can be the difference between a good or bad nuclear deal. So why are test-to-speech translator called KUDO versus human interpreters to see which better transmits all of the necessary elements for people to understand what they are hearing, including emotion, intonation, completeness, spontaneity, and speed, Liar's job. to test out if AI is really better than a human? Let's begin. Test one. Here we go. We gave Barry and Kudo a 2020 speech from King Felipe of Spain. The speech is about the COVID crisis. The subjects will focus on emotion. Because of the pandemic. I parachuted into this, not knowing anything about the speech, when it was given. In this speech, what matters more is the emotion and the ability to connect with the audience, because he's speaking to the citizens of Spain at a very difficult time when many have suffered loss, are going through a number of challenges. This reminds us of very deep feelings. At this time, many of you are fighting against the illness and what it has done in your homes. And the words are just the vehicle to get that across. Now, let's evaluate the speech translator. Good evening, I address you on this Christmas Eve. When we are living truly exceptional circumstances due to the pandemic. In terms of content and completeness, the AI did very well. The virus has broken into our lives. Bringing suffering, sadness or fear, altered our way of life. It struggled with word choice in a number of areas. It referred to an overflow in some hospitals and also overflow in some of our hospitals. Now, what that was referring to is at that time when hospitals were overwhelmed, when the king was recognizing the healthcare workers for the work that they had done. And he recognized the tremendous physical and emotional burden that they were carrying. And the AI translated that as the great emotional charge and physics on their backs. If you know Spanish, you can go back and figure out how it is that the AI determined to use those words. But obviously, that is borderline nonsensical. If you look at what the speech-to-speech -speech translation produced, it was by and large quite accurate. However, it's very difficult to get the sense of what the king is seeking to portray through the AI in its current state. Test two, spontaneity. We gave Walter and Kudo a 2021 speech from former Senator and now current Colombian president, Gustavo Petro. The most powerful and unproductive sectors of this country, 20 billion pesos a year. So I took the hour beforehand to look him up, look at some of his videos, just listen to the level of language he employs, listen to his rhythms, listen to, you know, watch his body language. Now let's see how the speech translator did. You are Mr. President in office. President in ejercicio. En el año 2019, este Congreso decidió regalarle. In the year of 2019, this Congress decided to give to the most powerful and unproductive sectors of the country 20 billion pesos a year. The particular strength of artificial intelligence was in capturing those terms of art. Artificial intelligence captured president in office or sitting president, presidente en funciones, minister of finance, ministro de hacienda special drawing rights. That's a consecrated term. It's a term that's enshrined that you can find in any number of glossaries. That's the official translation. And I, I miss that official caucuses as well, that the artificial translation rendered that very clearly and, and it pulls those in and did so very well. That's what I felt it was most effective at. And where I felt it had the most shortcomings was because of the pauses when El Pais has a stagnant economy and an impoverished middle class, what this tax reform brings. It is to increase taxes on the productive company, small and medium fundamentally. An absolute contradiction and absurdity. The artificial intelligence creates these little islands, these little bubbles that read like complete thoughts but are not because there's a flow. 
There's a flow that's coming after the pause. And thanks to an absolutely aggressive social policy, making a gift to the bankers. And thanks to an absolutely aggressive social policy, how to issue money to give to bankers. So the pauses in this particular speech seem to throw the artificial intelligence off. You have the vocal inflection, increasing taxes on those who govern Colombia. That, you know, allows you to understand there's something else coming, I'm not finished yet. Unproductive capital, those who don't work, but prey on the state, on the people, and on nature. Thank you, sir. Task three, we gave Barry and Kudo a 2021 speech from El Salvadorian President Nayib Bukele. The speech is highly crafted, prepared, and read from a teleprompter at a high rate of speed. We are going to make use of Bandesal. I will tell you that it was a very challenging experience for me as a professional interpreter to interpret that speech accurately and completely. What you have to do is process that information and extract the ideas to be able to give your listener something that's usable for them to be able to follow from that huge amount or that torrent of words that's coming at you. Now, let's evaluate the speech translator. Salvadoran people, good morning, as you all know. The world has suffered an increase in prices. When I was able to go back and listen to the AI uh, interpretation, what I noticed throughout the entire speech is that it did not miss any of the content. The cost of these goods increases to match the supply of new dollars, new euros, new yen, and, therefore, that affects world prices. That is why we are experiencing a global inflation that hits the pockets of everything, of all the people in the world, and El Salvador is no exception. I was taken aback by the artificial intelligence's ability to get all of the content and hold on to it. So in terms of completeness, it was very good and better than what I was able to do at that rate of speed. However, it often had mistakes and, and challenges with making the syntax, the word choice, and sometimes the grammar in English. And sometimes it would choose words that weren't really the most accurate way, the way a native English speaker would say something. It talked about new currency issues. This inflation generated by the incorporation of new currency issues, usually dollars, euros, yen. Which was really ambiguous because it was talking about new infusions of cash or currency into the monetary system. And people could confuse issues with problems and think, okay, what's the problem with these new currencies? What is happening is that the process that the professional interpreter has been doing for as long as professional interpreters have been working is to process that information and then serve it up to the listener already processed to know this is what's being talked about. So rather than saying new currency issues, I would have said infusions or injections of more cash into the monetary system. So for a profession that started with the Nuremberg trials, and continues to be used for important meetings and negotiations today, when is it appropriate to use an AI solution? I would say in informal situations, situations where there is not a high level of consequence for mistakes, I would not trust this in courtrooms. I would not trust this in the legal system. If there is a decision that has to be made, a medical interaction, asylum cases. I don't know that I would trust it for situations that require metaphorical language that don't catch the figurative meaning. Do I want to have a high-level diplomat or a president of my country speaking to another president through AI to make important decisions about the future of literally millions of lives? No. We need to look at it, we need to examine it, we need to find out how we can use this constructively and how we can use it carefully to aid us and not be afraid of it because that's no use if we're not flexible. We're eminently in a world 
where we need to be flexible and we need to be open to new ideas and new ways of doing things. It is not a replacement and you have to understand that. And if we're able to understand the power of the tool, we can respect the tool and use it to everyone's benefit.